Welcome back everyone. This week we are working with Unit G organizing content with lists and tables. We will start out this unit with creating an ordered list and for doing that we will be using the OL tag or OL element which stands for ordered list. We will be putting in the list using the LI tag or LI element for the list. Next we will create an unordered list using the UL tag. After that we will create a description list using the DL class. It does not use a, the LI element. Instead each list item is composed of two elements. One, the DT marks which mark the item being described and the DD marks for like dog dog indicates the descriptions of those items. Next we'll create a navigation bar using a list which is a more organized way to bring up the navigation bar. We will be using the UL and the LI elements to complete this task. Since HTML information can be organized into a table, we will be next inserting a table into our website. And this just organizes data in rows and columns, and data items are displayed in cells. Now, we'll be using several different elements to create our tables. We'll be using the table element, which is the start and end of a table. TH element, which is the content of a header cell. TD element is the content of the data cells. The TR element groups cells into rows. The T head element marks the header rows of a table. The T body element marks the rows that make up the body of a table. The T foot element marks the foot of rows of the table. Now a cascading style sheet border property is used to set the width and or the color of a cell or a table border. While working with our tables, the next thing we'll do is spanning columns and rows. A cell on a table can be formatted to be displayed across multiple rows or multiple columns. So rather than having the same piece of information in the same cells, you know, in a column or a row, we'll group those together and just span them across the cells that they would otherwise be duplicated in. So the, we'll be using the call span attribute, C-O-L-S-P-A-N attribute, used to merge a cell across multiple columns. We'll use the row span attribute which will obviously merge a cell across multiple rows. Both attributes are used in the opening TH or TD tag and receive a number value specifying the number of rows or columns. Next we'll be formatting a table with cascading style sheets because cascading, cascading style sheets can be used to style many aspects of a table such as font faces, the font and background colors, borders around and in between cells, uh, we can style an entire table a table section, an individual row, or a cell. Next we'll be focused on applying table-like structure to other elements. To make elements that don't belong in a table look like a grid, we use block level elements. Uh, we're going to use a div to create a structure that parallels that of a table. And we're going to use, use our cascading style sheet to specify that the elements should be treated as components of a table. So on our finish page we're going to have some code that is used for displaying our contact information in what looks like a table-like layout. So now that you know the objectives for this unit, let's go ahead and take a look at what our final page should look like as we're working with our rooms page here. You'll see that a little difference in our navigation bar here. Let me refresh this page so you can see the applied changes. Sorry, I said rooms earlier, I meant the reservations page. So as you see, we do have a ordered list here. We have created a table with some formatting here. You see the different colors being applied. You also see how we've spanned across columns and rows. How we have our unordered list. And how we have put our contact information. Even though it looks like a table, there's no borders or anything like that but it's nicely formatted. So let's go ahead and jump into Unit G and do all this work. Alright guys, so the first part we're going to be doing, as stated earlier, is creating an ordered list and here are the steps we are going to be performing. So the first group is we're going to start taking our student data files and we're going to be renaming them into our normal files that we use. So let's go ahead and jump in there and do that. Here are those files we'll be working with this week. And I'm going to go ahead and change the name of the files per the instructions in our unit G steps here. And you 
can go ahead and make those changes yourself. And that should be it on changing names of our files. For your files, don't forget to add your name in there and the text HTML5 unit G so that I know that they are your files that are, you're submitting. And once you've completed that work, we're going to open up our reserves.html in our text editor so that we can add the steps to create our ordered list. So go ahead and open up that now in your text editor. Okay, let's scroll down here in our reserve.html file to where we're going to put a blank line beneath the paragraph that starts out with our most sought after weekends. And there that is. Let's go ahead and enter the line there. And let's put our ordered list tag in. Let's go ahead and put our couple spaces there. And let's put our close tag in for our ordered list to end that. Next, let's create our list using the li element. So go ahead and add that for the Independence Day, Memorial Day, and Labor Day as described in the next few steps. And your code should just look just like this so that we have our opening and closing for our list items here. And we have Independence Day, Memorial Day, and Labor Day created. Go ahead and save your work and then we'll open up our f file and we will see the list that we just created put in there. Once you open up your page you should see that our ordered list is there now. Hopefully your page looks like that. If not, go back and see what you might have uh, mistakenly did as an oversight. Now we will move on to our next section, which will be creating an unordered list, once again working in our reserve.html file. Here are the steps from our e-text for creating an unordered list for this next portion of Unit G. Now that you have your place where we're going to be doing, let's go ahead and go back into our reserve.html file. Now that we're back into our file and our text editor here, let's insert a blank line beneath the paragraph that begins with Lakin Lakeland Reads is also available. So go ahead and find that now. Here we go. So let's go ahead and enter a line there. Let's add our UL tag for our unordered list. Go ahead and enter a couple lines there. And we'll put our close tag in. Now let's go ahead and add the body here. Let's go ahead and add our list items for weddings, birthdays, and family reunions here. And go ahead and save our work, then we'll reload our reserve.html file in our browser to see the change we've made. So once you've got that information entered, hit save. And let's open up our page and refresh it again. And after I refresh, you can see that our unordered list of weddings, birthdays, and family reunions has now been added to our special events area. Now let's go ahead and open up our Lakeland Cascading Style Sheet in our text editor and we're going to create a style rule using the unordered list type selector and then add the name value pair list style type square. So let's go ahead and do that now so we can build that into our Cascading Style Sheet. Once we've got that completed, what we should notice is that our default style here for our bullet character will then become a square. So let's go ahead and make that change in our cascading style sheet now. There we go, now we got that sheet opened up. As you notice, we try to keep everything in like an alphabetical order here just for clean code. So let's go ahead and 
scroll down we see a body figure fig caption we should have a th down here or something close let's just put it under our nav yeah it looks like a good place because then we start getting into our hashtag names here so let's go ahead and enter that here go ahead and put your code in there there is our UL style rule here, our UL type selector, and we've put in the code to change our bullet character. All right, go ahead and save your work. Now let's go back into our page and refresh it and see our change. Let's go ahead and see if our bullet list item here changed to, changes to a square. We'll go ahead and refresh. and the change worked like we expected. Instead of a circle, now we have a block square. All right, let's move on as we are completed a creating an unordered list section of our unit G. Good job, guys. All right, next in our e-text, let's jump to creating a description list and we'll perform the steps over the next couple pages. And hopefully you guys are paying a lot of attention to the figures that are included in our e-text because they really help you stay focused and make sure that what you're doing is correct. And it's also a quick reference for when you're skimming back through your chapter as you're working on your, your web page as well as the other assignment for the week so that you can go back and quickly find out, oh yeah, now I remember how to do that. Alright, so let's jump in and create our description list. Now that we're back in our reserve.html file, we're going to go ahead and locate our paragraph tag or our p tag immediately before the span element containing the text Philip Blaine. And that is right here. Here's Philip Blaine, and here's our p element right there. And we're going to replace it with our DL class or our definition list class or description list class um, equals contact. So let's go ahead and put that in now. Yeah, we should probably go ahead and scroll that over, make it look a lot cleaner. Okay, that looks a lot better now. Next, we're going to delete our code that's existing there for the span ID equals name, and we're instead going to put our DT mark there for proprietor, and then we're going to put our end or close DT mark there, and then we'll press enter. Let's go ahead and enter that information now. So here is our span ID name. We're going to replace that with our DT element, which marks our list item. Let's go ahead and match our previous line indent. So let's go ahead and enter, hit enter. And then we're going to tab over and put our uh, DD element mark which which marks our item description in. Let's go ahead and put that in here. So the only thing we should have here will be our Philip Blaine name. So everything after that will be gone. So let's go ahead and make that change now. Here at the end. Okay, guys, let's do the same thing over the next few lines here. So let's go ahead and move on through the next step. Let's take out this section here and put in our DT. And then we will take out the closed span here and put our closed DT in. Go ahead and hit enter. Now let's go ahead and replace our colon and space here with our DT tag there. Sorry about that. Just notice that I put the wrong here. The I put the list item instead of the item description 
tag here, so we'll change that to DD. And let's change our BR to our closed. There, now we have our DD element that marks our item description there for our phone. Alright guys, go ahead and repeat the same steps for the DT and the DD tags to finish out the fax and the email lines here. So go ahead and do that now. Okay, we'll go ahead and finish that one there. Everything looks good. Next we're going to go ahead and replace the end of our paragraph tag here with the end of our description list tag there. So we'll close it there. Let's go ahead and save our work now. Now we're going to go ahead and return to our Lakeland cascading style sheet. Alright, now that we're back in our Lakeland, let's go ahead and scroll up. And we are going to go ahead and go to our style rule that sets the font family value for our group of type selectors to a font stack. And we're going to see that here. And we're going to go ahead and add our DT there. There we go. So now we have added our DT elements into this style group here. Next we are going to add a style rule that sets the font weight to bold for each of our DT elements within the contact class. Alright, so let's go ahead and scroll down to add that style rule for our contact list. Here we go. Okay, here in our classes. And we'll add our dot contact DT. And we've set the weight to bold. Alright, now that we've created that new style rule, let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to reload our reserve.html in our browser. Okay, now that we have our browser back up. Let's go ahead and refresh and see the changes that get made here. Alright, now you can see the changes that were made per our creating our description list and making changes to our cascading style sheet. So hopefully yours looks like this. Um, if not, go back in. Try to find your mistake. If you can't find it, go ahead and let me know and I'll see if I can't help you. Alright, but let's just go ahead and move on to our next section now which is creating a navigation bar using a list.
Now we'll move into our spanning columns and rows section. And those steps are included here. So let's go ahead and get back into our reserve.html and our text editor and start including our new steps. Now let's insert a new line beneath the T head tag. We're going to indent two additional spaces. We're going to put, we're going to go ahead and start a row. So we're going to put our TR element in there. We're going to press enter. We're going to indent to match the previous line and then we're going to type our end line, our end row. Between those opening and closing tags we are, that we just put in, we're going to indent to a couple additional spaces and we're going to add the code there on step two, which is our th element, which is content of a table header cell. So, you know, and always remember that our content is centered by default in most of the browsers when, with this code. So we're going to put our, our th, then we're going to put our title period in there, we're going to close our th. Next line, we're going to have a column span of four within our th for room, and then the third line is going to be our TH with our extra cot. So let's go ahead and put that information in there now, and then we'll save our work and we'll reload our reserve.html in our browser. Enter. Do it again so we'll have our close. Let's go ahead and go back in here and enter again so we can put those new three lines of code. All right, now we've got our three lines of code. And remember that the column span here, that attribute was added to display the cell content in multiple columns. So let's go ahead and save our work. And we will refresh our reserve page. All right, let's go ahead and refresh our page and see our changes here. And there you can see the changes that were applied. And you can see how room spans over all four, which we put in four, columns. And as you're looking at this, you're probably like, well, that looks kind of silly having period there twice and extra cot there twice. We'll take care of that next. Okay, just like we expanded our columns to multiple columns for room, let's go ahead and do that for rows for period and extra cot. So we'll just add the row span in here for two and we'll do the same thing here for extra cot. Go ahead and save our work now that we did that. Next let's go ahead and delete our th element in the second heading row containing the text period and then we're going to delete the th element in the second heading row containing the text extra cot. So let's go ahead and delete that now. And we'll delete the line for extra cot. I've got it cleaned up here. Now let's take care of that row span issue with the cost of $15 for the extra cot. So let's go ahead and we will add our row span attribute in this first TD element. So we're going to have our row spanning over two rows. And let's just go ahead and take out the second entry here for that. Okay, let's save our work and refresh our page and see if we got everything right. All right, now that we're back on our page, we'll go ahead and refresh that and see if we see the changes here, here, here. As you can see, ours looks just like figure G17 as we span across two different rows here, two different rows here, and two different rows here. 
So to complete our next session for formatting a table with our cascading style sheets, here are the steps that we are going to perform. So we'll go ahead and get started by getting into our Lakeland Cascading Style Sheet in our text editor. With our Lakeland Cascading Style Sheet open up, we are going to delete the style rule we created earlier, the TDTH style rule, and we are going to instead add the block of code that is listed on figure G18. So let's go ahead and delete our style rule we created earlier and we will instead put the code in from figure G18. So you see we have three new style rules. We have one for a table. We have one for our TD and one for our TH. We've separated them. So yours should be exactly like the ones that I have us here, which is straight out of our text. Alright, go ahead and save our work and we are going to go ahead and go back into our reserve.html. Now that we're back in our reserve.html file, we're going to add some column, column elements that will divide the six columns of our table into three units to which we can apply styles. The first column class applies to the first column, the room columns group, with a span of four, includes the next four columns and the COTCOL class applies to the last column in our table. All the column elements must be contained in a column group element. So let's go ahead and put that information in here now right after our first table element. Let's go ahead and hit enter and we are going to put the column group coding in here as such and you will see that information here. Alright, next we're going to go to the T-Body section. We're going to locate our TD element containing the text high season that we created earlier. And that is right here. And we're going to change our TD element here. We're going to add a new class, a class called season and we're going to add it here as well as for off season. So let's go ahead and to our TD element here. And we're in class equals season. And we're going to do the same thing down here for off season. Same class. The last thing the text asked for, apparently I already did it and maybe you did as well, was to put a class table note down here after the closing table tag. Let's go ahead and put that in there as well if yours doesn't have it. And we're going to go ahead and save our work and go back to our Lakeland style sheet. Let's go ahead and save reserve and go back to your style sheet. Here in our Lakeland Cascade style sheet we're going to go ahead and add our TH element to our style rule for, that sets the font family values here at the beginning. Let's go ahead and add our TH element. There, now we've added our TH type selector. Let's go ahead and save our work. And then we're going to reload our reserve.html in our browser once again to see the changes put in effect that we just created for our table using our cascading style sheet here. Alright, now that we're back we should see those style changes for our format get put here into our table. So let's go ahead and refresh our page now. And change that we made take effect. There we go. We'll go ahead and see that one style worked. Let's go ahead and uh, I don't like the looks of this too much. So I'm going to go ahead and see if uh, there's some coding issues here. Alright, yeah, we did skip over step six and seven. So let's go ahead and go back into our Lakeland style sheet and add the code to make those other format changes here in our in our table. 
All right, so based on figure G20, the first style rule we're going to change is for our table header cell. And in that style rule, we're simply going to add a background attribute. So let's go ahead and here, we've already got that one there. So that looks good. And next we're going to go in and add like five more changes. So there in figure tw C, or I'm sorry, G20, let's go ahead and add our background color style rules there for our column groups. So we'll start out with dot C O T C O L and we'll scroll down to keep our naming conventions in our alphabetical order put here and keep in check there. So we'll add it right after contact and before description. Next one we will add is our first column one. And we'll add that right after the description one there. After that we will add the rates TD one. Gonna hit enter here. After that we will do the rates TD season. Go ahead and enter that code there. And this all just matches up with what's in figure G20. Next one we'll do is are the room columns. Let's go ahead and enter that here. Now that we've got that one done, we will do the table note. And that should be our last one. Alright, now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and save our work. Now that we've saved our work, let's go ahead and jump back in to our reserve.html and see if those background colors were applied to our column groups. So I'll go ahead and refresh my page now. That looks a lot better. Hopefully your looks the same and uh, didn't make any more mistakes like I did. Alright, now we've got that section done for formatting a table with CSS. Let's go on to the next section. This is the last section here in Unit G. We will be applying a table-like structure to other elements. And the steps listed for that are here. So to complete those steps, now that you've seen them, we will go back in and to our reserve.html in our text editor. Scroll down to the question section and then in the opening and closing text or description list we're replacing DL with div. Now that we've made those changes, let's go ahead and change our add it, make a difference by adding a new line first. So let's go ahead and enter that line now. And we are going to add a new line of code. Div class equals row. Before each of our DT elements at the same indent level. Then we're going to add a new line containing the closed div after each DD element. Then increase the indentation for each DT and DD element by two spaces. Just for good clean code. So we'll put our new line in now. Now let's go ahead and replace our DT tag. It's one instance, another, another, and the last DT element. All right, now that we've done that, let's move on to the next one and and replace our DD tags with our div tags. So there's one, and the next one. Alright, now all of our DD tags have been inserted. Now we're going to change our end DT and end DD tag with the end div tag. Go ahead and start back up here. Be 
careful here and make sure that you get them all. So before you move forward, go ahead and do a double check. Once you've checked over, go ahead and make sure your code looks like it does in figure G22. Okay, let's now go in and add our extra spacing. Okay, after our, our Philip Blaine here, let's take out proprietor. So we just have Philip Blaine div. Now we're going to hit enter, and we're going to have a closed div for our class here. So we're going to repeat that in these other areas as well. And that should make it look just like figure G22. So let's go ahead and put our div class row at the beginning of this section too. And then we've got our spacing and we're going to add our closed div. There we go. Now our phone area looks just like our proprietary area, proprietor area. Now let's do that with our last couple here for fax and email. That looks a lot better. Hopefully as you compare yours, yours will look just like it does in figure G22 as well. Alright, go ahead and save your work now that you've confirmed. And we're going to jump back into our reserve. Sorry, we're going to close our reserve HTML. We're going to go back into our Lakeland style sheet. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now that we've got our style sheet open back up, we're going to change our, the selector for our dot contact DT rule to dot category. Then we're going to enter the style rules that are shown in figure G23. Let's go ahead and change that to category then. And let's put in the new style rules. Go here and put our first one in. Dot contacts now display table. Put in our dot row. We'll put it in right after dot rooms call. And the last one we'll add is dot row div. And we'll put that one right after the one we just created. And there's the code for that one. So now this don, dot contact rule sets the display property to table for the description list. The dot row rule style the next level of div elements to behave as table rows. The dot row div rule specifies that the next level of div elements behave as table cells and specifies 
the values for vertical and horizontal padding. So now that you've got those in, let's go ahead and save our work and we'll refresh our reserve.html page and look at our changes. So down here at the bottom we should see our changes get made. As of now we should be able to see that our contact information is being displayed in a table-like layout. So let's go ahead and refresh now. And the change has been made. You can see the change is instantly made and it does look like our figure G24. So at this point go ahead and uh, return to your Lakeland.css and your text editor, save all of your work, save a copy of that as llprint.css, remove all name value pairs that specify color as well as the pair that specifies the background image, and then change all the colors and style rules based on the pseudo classes to black, then save your work again. Uh, validate all of your code as usual and make changes as necessary to fix any errors. Hopefully you don't have any and then put them on the web server in a unit G folder just like you've done in the previous weeks and then I'll take a look at your work. This should prepare you now for not only completing the unit work but as as well doing the independent challenge 3 for your hotel Natoma and that starts on page 182 this week so and don't forget always include that advanced challenge exercise elements into your work as well. So I look forward to seeing both pieces of work from you and uh, I wish you well. Any questions feel free to ask and then I'll try to answer them as best I can you know whether it's sending you the code so you see maybe what you might have missed or evaluating your code that you put on the web server. So far you guys are doing a great job. I really appreciate it and good luck on this week's.